Before we reach the recording of the year award, we have one addition to our awards this year. Many of you will remember conductor Semyon Bichkov coming up in 2010 to accept his award for recording of the year and reading his speech from an iPad. Well, other tablets are available. <laughs> iPads have not only become something of a norm, but are helping shape a revolution in how music is presented, distributed, and enjoyed. A tablet's ability to allow the user to fully immerse and engage themselves in a particular work or composer is a major step forward. The imagination, thought, and hard work that has gone into some of these apps is impressive indeed, and we wanted to start recognizing apps. So, we assembled a special jury, which included the digital editor of Radio 3 and the prom, Steve Bobrick, and cellist Matthew Barley, whose performances incorporate technology in wonderful, surprising, and often in, in, in very much engaging ways. Uh, quite a revelation. Please welcome Matthew Barley to the stage to reveal the first ever winner of the BBC Music Magazine App Award. Thank you very much. It's a great pleasure to be here to present this new award. Um, I would say, however, before I read out the winner, that um, apart from the nominations we received, the competition wasn't particularly strong. And uh, I would say a very strong message to all those digital app creators out there. Please go forth and multiply. Your time is coming. So the winning app is a thrilling exploration of Beethoven's Ninth Symphony through no less than four iconic recordings by Leonard Bernstein, Ferenc Frixé, Herbert von Karajan, and Sir John Elliot Gardiner. There are videoed insights by world-renowned experts and absorbing written analysis by David Owen Norris, and you can follow the score or even the original manuscript as you listen to the music. Beautifully designed, beautifully compiled, and engaging from start to finish. The winner of the App Award is Touch Press and Deutsche Grammophon for their Beethoven's Ninth Symphony for iPad. Thank you. Well, I think we better have a look just so you can see what this magic is all about. My favorite version of the Night Symphony is in my head. <laughs> That's the bit that gives the real free song. People understood that it had power. They would play it without moving the vowels, but like this. And then it goes. It is extraordinary, even for a Luddite like me, I have to say. Uh, it is really, really wonderful and a magical way to immerse yourself in the music. Please welcome to the stage Max Withy from Touch Press to accept this very justified award. You know you're in a distinguished audience when there's a laugh at the pitch uh, change in the tension. Um, I'm going to safely put this here for a second. I'm not going to speak for very long. It's the end of a long and very interesting afternoon. Um, producing an app like that is a huge team effort, and um, it's almost like making a feature film with so many different people involved. But I particularly pull out our designer, Matt Aitken, and our creative director, Theo Gray, uh, producer Fiona Barkley, and producer Guy Jones who worked uh, extraordinarily hard, and then, of course, the engineers who wrote all that wonderful software, Tom Waitman in particular. Um, with so many talents and skills and knowledge in the room, I, I will just say one more thing, and that is I believe apps are the harbinger 
of a way of publishing the music that we all love in the coming decades, and a way of publishing it not only with the performance, but with all the expertise and the understanding that can make classical music accessible to a really wide audience. And I think it's a very exciting beginning. Um, I'd like to particularly thank our partners, Deutsche Grammophon, and I, I hope that, Barry, you might say a word. Yeah. The, the app was a major investment uh, for time, money, resource, for Touch Press and DG. I'm delighted in the joint faith that they both had in each other, one young company and the other that, of course, traces its lineage right back to the dawn of our industry. And in fact, the English, Japanese, and German versions have together been downloaded by just under a million people already. And I hope that does, as Max said, give faith to us all as we work out the dizzying array of technological possibilities that are in front of us, um, that, that, that there may be possibilities to which we haven't yet um, opened our minds. We found a fantastic partner, uh, and I think both parties would say the key to that was collaboration, uh, and each brought a unique set of assets and skills to that. But I'll, above all, I just urge you to try it on your iPads, and it is iPad, by the way. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't work on Android because it's just too clever. Uh, so, <laughs> sorry, Samsung. Uh, and in that regard, uh, a huge um, 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 debt of thanks goes not only to DG, Rupert Wag, um, and Stefan Steiglader, who must be mentioned at Deutsche Grammophon as well as Mark Wilkinson, president, but also to iTunes and Jonathan Gruber, who gave it the most tremendous support imaginable, without which I do not think we would have reached a million people. So we're enormously grateful for that accolade as well. But really, just try it. It's, it's the most tremendous fun you can have, whether you're slightly interested in Beethoven 9 or, like people in this audience, obviously have the most abiding interest in it. Thank you, that's all.